So, this array of goodness represents some of Dinky's last toys. So what we have here is a group of Dinky toys, which I've somehow acquired the boxes for. <laughs> um, and the patroller is here, outside the box, obviously. Um, but I think it was already quite loose when, I, when, it, when it arrived, so I just took it out. And it's a rather lovely thing. But the, the Dinky catalogue that I have here is number 14. And I think this is the latest one that I have. And it does not include any of these. Although it does include something very similar to this. And this is the last thing I got to round off this little sort of mini collection. This is a Zygon War Chariot. But in this catalogue, it is described slightly differently as a Galactic War Chariot. So that's this exactly the same thing, but just inside different colours. And it comes in a range of different colours. The spacemen are different colours. The missile is a different colour. It varies a lot, but it is basically the same toy. So what was what confused me when I was getting these together is that there is also this toy. And this is described as a, a space battle cruiser. This actually came out before these, and it's it's sort of it's it's generically titled, so it doesn't have Zygon in it, but it does appear in the catalogue. In fact, as you can probably see here, it's actually on the front page of this catalogue. So that was the first time they'd really sort of gone non-branded and gone outside of Star Trek for their um, their spaceships, and you can see that there on, on the on the inside of the front cover. Also on the inside of that front cover is this, which is the, the Trident Starfighter, which is um, Dinky 362. So that's a quite a nice thing as well, but it's a really big lump of metal. But what I do like about it is that they were really trying hard with the, um, you know, sort of the artistic background on the boxes. So you can imagine that this, this would have been a sort of a, a Dinky toy shelf back in the day, in the sort of very early 80s, possibly. Um, maybe even the early 70s, actually. Um, let me just see what... I'm just trying to see if I can read the, um, the copyright on this. So this catalogue came out in 1978. So late 70s, probably still early 80s, because they still have been on the shelves. But this is kind of what a dinky science fiction-themed shelf might have looked like, together with Space 1999 Eagles, UFOs, um, you know, all the sort of Jerry Anderson tie-ins as well. But of course, these would have been cheaper for Dinky to make because they didn't need licensing. So although Zygons are mentioned in Doctor Who, it's nothing to do with these. Um, so this was the last one, as I said, that, that I hadn't got. It's incredibly weighty for its size, but it's just a little um, missile firing truck, basically. Um, I think the missile on here is actually different again to the one that's shown in the catalogue on the um, the Galactic War chariot. Um, it looks like it's they've, they've taken a slightly different mould for it, so that might be a slight difference between the two models, actually. Um, <laughs> use only missiles provided. Do not fire at point-blank range or point or fire missiles into mouth or towards face. So fair dues, health and safety even back then. But the, even these boxes, you see, were quite... They were quite, you know, sort of colourfully done. You know, the, the illustrations on them were quite nice on the top as well. And these guys came with um, a space station cutout effect. So you could use the back of the boxes and the inside of the boxes, which you can probably see there, to create a sort of space station play base for them, which again is, is, is clever. But the interesting thing about this one in particular is that it's modelled very much after this one. So the patroller has the missile assemblies from the space battle cruiser, and this one has the body of the space battle cruiser with a slightly different cockpit and a slightly different arrangement of um, pilots and crew in the cockpit, but more or less the same toy again. So Dinky being very clever towards the end to sort of reuse the molds they already had 
to to complete its manufacture. But I just wanted to share that with you because I haven't. I, I've literally only just got the, um, the Zygon War Chariot, and that just kind of rounds out my full collection of own brand dinky science fiction toys. And you know they're all incredibly solid. They're all incredibly metal. They're probably all incredibly lethal as well because their missile launches are incredibly powerful. <laughs> but you know it's quite nice that. It's kind of very much British science fiction kind of design going its own way, not actually using licenses like everyone does these days, and just doing its own thing, which I think is lovely because you know we've always been incredibly strong. There's a surprising amount of British influence into things like Star Wars 2001. You know, all those really classic space designs were down to Brits. Um, I couldn't tell you names, I'm afraid, but you know that you can go and look that up for yourself if you're interested, obviously. But I just like the fact that you know these were the toys I had available to me as I was growing up. Although ironically, I had the Dinky Eagles. I did not have any of these when I was little. Apart, I think maybe once um, I had a UFO interceptor. I think, um, but everything else I never I never came across until I started looking into Dinky Toys as a whole. You know, I've just found in this catalog um, a fire engine that I had as well. And I'm thinking, oh, I finally figured out where the, where the, where that that memory comes from. Um, so I, yeah, as I say, I just thought I'd share. I mean, it's interesting as well because even then they were still also cross advertising the the non Zygon ships on on the the back covers of, of these boxes as well. So. You know, they, they kept on trying, but I think at this point they were just, you know, the Star Wars um, set merchandising would have been in full force. And unfortunately, it would not have had the same appeal as these at the time. So, you know, circumstances just overtook them in the end, unfortunately. But, you know, it is what it is that, you know, that's progress for you, isn't it? But I'm, I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite pleased to have these little, uh, these examples. And um, I'm still, I'm still surprised that um, I hadn't twigged that, the Marauder was quite so different from the Space Battle Cruiser because, ironically, the Space Battle Cruiser is the only one I don't have a box for at the minute. Um, so I might have to keep my eye open for, for one of those and just see see how that was presented because I'm guessing it probably looks a lot like that. Um, it would probably have fitted into the same sort of size box as the, as the Trident Starfighter. So, um, yeah. But I think also, I mean, it's also the case, of course, that at that point in time, Corgi were pinching a lot of the science fiction licenses as well. So they had Star Trek as well as Dinky, but they also had Buck Rogers. Um, so, you know, they were they were covering the bases pretty well for themselves as well. So that's it for that one, really. I just thought I'd, um, I'd show you that little uh, collection of yesteryear. And it's just nice to think of these being sort of on shelves once upon a time, some 40 plus years ago now. Which is incredible when you consider that you can still get these in boxes in really, really good condition. It's British manufacturing, isn't it? C'est la vie, or, or uh, c'est la vie, I suppose. It was, the, it was <laughs> once upon a time life. So um, that's it for this one. Uh, please like and subscribe as ever, and cheers for now.